In this video, I'm going to tear down the starter I replaced in the Accord starter replacement video to find out why it failed and to show you what's inside. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the positive motor terminal from the solenoid, 12 millimeter. Just gonna put the nut back on so we don't lose it. Now we're going to separate the gearbox from the motor. To do that, you have to remove three Phillips head screws. One here, and two here. The proper screwdriver is critical because you don't want to strip these. Now you have two bolts. These are the through bolts for the motor. They also hold the two halves of the gearbox together. Two eight millimeter bolts. when you move the other bolt the end housing for the starter and the magnet housing will come off as well so just hold the motor together and you can separate the gear housing from the starter motor cover and this is the this is the reduction gear and overrunning clutch assembly and here's the gear from the actual starter motor now I'm going to remove the back half of the gear case the solenoid will come off with it and here you have the armature, the magnets are located in this casing here, and on the back end you have the brush assembly. I'm going to remove that. And here are the brushes, and I can already see why this starter failed. The brushes are just worn out. Actually I'm going to remove the uh, brush holder from this back end here to show you. Just two Phillips screws. And as I said before, here's the issue. These brushes are worn down. If these brushes were good, they should be protruding much further than they are now to make contact with the commutator. What happens as the brushes wear is the spring's job is to continue pushing out the brush to maintain contact with the commutator. When the brushes wear past a certain point, they bottom out, as you can see here, there's the braid that connects the wire from the battery to the brush itself. And that wire is bottoming out against that cutout that's holding the brush, which is preventing the spring from pushing the brush out any further. These are just absolutely worn down. You can't get battery power to the commutator on the armature. Your starter motor can't work. Nothing fancy here, you have the armature in this housing here which houses the magnets. I'll remove it. You 
Here's the armature. Here's the commutator. These individual segments here are the commutator bars. The brushes make contact with the commutator to apply battery voltage and ground to the armature windings. Here's the motor housing and here are the permanent magnets. Like magnetic poles repel and opposite poles attract, the direction of current flow through the armature windings is mechanically switched by the brushes running over the rotating commutator. The direction of flow is changed by alternating which end of the winding is connected to power and ground. When you change the direction of current flow through an electromagnet which the armature windings become when they're energized, you change the location of its north and south pole. By changing the direction of current flow through the armature windings at just the right moment, the poles of the armature never align with the poles of the permanent magnets. Since they never align, the armature continues to rotate. This can be difficult to understand without a visual aid. I've posted a link to a video in the description that will explain it more clearly. Now here's the reduction gear slash overrunning clutch slash pinion assembly. Now as I said before, there is an overrunning clutch in this assembly. And its purpose is to allow power to be applied to the pinion gear in only one direction. So when I turn counterclockwise here, you can see the pinions turning, but when I turn clockwise, it freewheels. So torque is not being applied to the pinion. The purpose of this is to protect the motor armature. As I said before, we have a gear reduction here. So that means that the starter motor armature is going to spin at a high RPM and the pinion is going to spin at a lower RPM, but it's going to produce more torque than the armature could provide on its own. Now let's think about this for a minute. That's fine when the engine is, is cranking, but after the engine starts, you have to think this pinion still out there, engaged to the flywheel, so now you have a large gear driving a smaller gear, and that'll cause the exact opposite effect. You will have a decrease in torque and an increase in speed on the armature. That could cause it to spin at an extremely high RPM and destroy it and your starter motor. So in order to protect the armature from being driven by the engine after it starts, the overrunning clutch will freewheel and decouple the flywheel, the rotating flywheel, from the armature. And that's the purpose of an overrunning clutch. Now here's a look at that brush assembly. You'll see that this is the positive terminal from the solenoid, so this is the positive terminal from your battery. And the positive wire is connected to two brushes, and the other two brushes are grounded. And how are they grounded? You'll see there's two wire braids here that's bonded to this piece of steel here, which wraps around down here. This metal back plate on the brush holder assembly makes contact with the two contact points on the motor end cap. The motor end cap is bolted to the gearbox cover, which is in direct contact with the transmission housing, which is grounded. Now I'm going to remove the solenoid from the gear case. There's three screws holding it. One is covered by a plug on the exterior here. And there's two more at the interior of the gear case. Then you can remove the solenoid like that. So how the entire system works is solenoid gets activated. The plunger pulls down like this. After the plunger has been pulled down, the solenoid also connects battery positive to the starter motor positive wire, causing the motor to rotate. That pulls down on this piece of the fork, which causes the fork to come out, like so, which pushes on this button, which causes the pinion gear to mesh with the flywheel. 
So let's put this all back together. Make sure the notch in the solenoid lines up with that piece on the fork. Solenoid will only go in one way, it's, it's keyed. There are two dots here. They'll mesh up with the two dots on the housing. Rotate the housing until the pins line up. Like that. Then your screw holes will be lined up. Just gonna install this one first because it's the easiest to access. Install the other two. In the gear case area. Another thing to check when inside a starter is the bearings. Here's how to check them. Grab the bearing and spin it. It should spin and stop shortly after like this one does. And there should be no noise. Okay, let's check this one. This is the prime example of a bad bearing. See how long it spins? And you hear that noise? That means that the grease inside's gone and this bearing will fail soon. Let's check the two bearings on the armature. There's another one. Check this one. Wow, this one's even worse. It doesn't rotate at all when I let go of it. So this one is definitely shot. So while technically you could just replace the brush holder assembly here and get this starter motor working again, as you can see here, out of four bearings, three of them are bad. You would also need to clean between and polish the commutator segments. And that's exactly why I don't recommend rebuilding a starter because sure you could just fix what's broken but the rest of the starter is equally worn and you have to look over all the parts. Let's put everything back together. Insert the gear assembly into the housing. Press down until it pops in. Now I'm going to reinstall the brush holder assembly into the end cap. Two Phillips screws. Hold that in place. If you're wondering about the hole over here, that's where this piece goes. This is basically just a vent. It's angled like this so that grease and grime can't get into the motor. Occasionally the plastic gets brittle and breaks. Now before I go to the next step, what I like to do is install the armature onto the brush holder. Normally you need a screwdriver to hold at least two of the brushes out of the way to get the commutator in there. Honestly in this situation with the brushes this short I'm not even going to need to hold them back with a screwdriver. I'm just going to angle the commutator and use it to push the two of the brushes in then drop it down like that. Now we can insert the magnet housing over the armature. Now the magnet housing is keyed if you look here, you'll see a notch. And if you look down here, you'll see another notch. Now we're going to rotate it until that key lines up with the hole in the end cap. Like that. Because you'll see it'll fit flush with the housing. It won't do that any other way unless that key is lined up. So now with that partially assembled, I'm going to put the top back on the gear case. Just have to push it on straight and it'll pop down. Then while holding the two halves in alignment, install the screws. Make sure you install them in the right holes and not in the area where the motor through bolts go. Don't fully tighten these screws until you have the through bolts for the motor in.
This is a little bit different than how I disassembled it, but this makes it easier to reassemble. Now install the motor into the gear housing. The notch is right there. Line it up with the notch on the housing there. It won't sit flush unless you do that. Rotate it. You can see now it's sitting evenly all around. Do the same with the end housing. Then install the through bolts while holding the motor together. through bolt with the bracket goes over here while the solenoid is facing the right. The bracket should sit in this direction with the bolt hole facing up. It will also lock in place so it can't rotate in any other direction when you have it positioned properly. Now you can just snug them up, you don't need to over tighten them, just get it snug. These are only 8mm fasteners, you don't want to shear them off. Now you can do the final tightening on the three gear case screws. Just snug them up. Pop the rubber plug back in on that exterior solenoid screw. Then you can just reconnect the motor terminal to the solenoid. Just snug it up, no need to get it super tight. And that's it.